There comes a moment in winter when the cold turns brutal, when even fire begins to fail. Out on the North American plains, the wind moves slow, heavy, sharp enough to cut skin, and the frozen ground feels like stone. A campfire outside only trembles a tired glow in a world of ice. And in nights like this, one question rises. How did anyone like survive when everything above rises. them was freezing? Their answer was simple and brilliant. They went down into the earth. Beneath the frozen crust, the soil holds a quiet warmth, 10 to 20 degrees stronger than the air. Just three to four feet below, packed earth forms a natural shield, trapping heat the way old buffalo hides once protected life. Down there, the wind has no voice. Down there, darkness turns calm. If you placed your hand on the ground, you'd feel it, a soft warmth pushing back. And if you've ever wondered how they Down built there, that hidden world, stay until voice. the end. The plains were wide, empty, and brutal. Out there, winter didn't whisper. It cut. The wind pushed across the land at nearly 70 kilometers an hour, slicing through clothes, through skin straight into the bone. And when the temperature dropped below zero, even a wooden house standing on the open ground became nothing more than a cold box shaking all night. That was the problem the Plains tribes knew too well. The wind didn't just chill, it stole. It stole heat. It stole sleep. It stole life. And then came the discovery that shaped their winters. The Earth itself was a wall of insulation. They realized something simple, something powerful. If the cold rules the surface, then survival begins below it. So they built the earth lodge half above ground, half beneath it. They started by digging a circular pit three to four feet deep, deep enough for the soil to become a natural shield. Packed earth at that depth slows heat loss and cuts wind exposure almost completely. Then they raised sturdy posts, laid timber, for a dome covered it with thick layers of grass and finished with heavy soil. The roof itself could be two or three feet of earth, a massive blanket pressed down by the weight of the land. And inside, everything changed. The wind disappeared, the cold stopped clawing, the air warmed, a family could breathe again. You can imagine it. You step down the short entrance tunnel, your shoulders brushing the cool walls, and the moment you reach the center, the ground feels warmer than the air outside by 10 to 20 degrees. The fire in the hearth glows low, but the heavy earth above traps the heat exactly where it needs to stay. Some say the earth keeps its promises, and inside an earth lodge that promise was simple warmth, reliable, quiet, survival. And today, modern shelters copy the same logic, thick insulation, low profiles, wine blocking shapes. They just took what the old world already understood. But keeping heat in is only half the story. Warmth. What about the smoke that fills a sealed Every home? That's the next secret. Call. Winter in the plateau and Great Basin didn't arrive softly. It pressed down month after month until food ran thin and the air froze to nearly 20 below. Above ground, even a full night of burning wood couldn't keep a house warm. The wind slipped through every wall. The cold crawled into every blanket. And by dawn, breath turned to mist, hanging in the darkness like a quiet warning. That was the problem. The surface simply couldn't hold heat. Not for a night. Not for a family. Not for a winter. So the tribes looked at the land and understood a truth of the cold had been whispering all along. If the chill falls from above, then survival waits below. They dug pits, deep pits sometimes one and a half meters, sometimes closer to two. Down at that depth, the earth stays steady, its temperature unmoved by the wind. Packed soil at that level becomes a natural shield, slowing heat loss the way heavy blankets slow a heartbeat. And from that hollow, they built upward wooden poles arranged into a cone, thick layers of grass, well. and finally a heavy skin of earth pressed tight over the roof. The entrance, a narrow opening at the top. You crawled down through the darkness and stepped into a different world. Down there, the cold faded. 
Down there, the silence felt warm. The Down warm there, the pit held the heat three or four times longer than any surface lodge. You can picture it. You lower yourself through the roof tunnel hands on cool wood feet, touching soil that feels warmer than the air above. A small fire glows and the heavy earthen roof traps the warmth like a promise kept by the land itself. Because sometimes life hides where few people look. And these pit houses followed the same logic as modern snow shelters, low insulated, sealed from wind. But warmth alone never finishes the story. How did they manage smoke in a room sealed by earth? That secret rises next. In a winter that stretched for months, survival wasn't just about warmth, it was about food. And whether that food stayed alive long enough for the family to stay alive with it. Above ground, the cold didn't preserve anything. It crushed it. Food froze solid, cracked apart, spoiled faster than you'd expect. One night of open air could turn a season's supply into ice you couldn't eat. So the tribes turned to the one place where the cold had no power beneath Warmth the earth. Where they knew the soil held steady temperatures warmer by 10 to 20 degrees compared to the wind above. And they understood a quiet truth. Sometimes warmth is not heat, it's stability. Their solution was simple, clever, and thousands of years ahead of its time. They dug small storage pits just deep enough for the ground to become a natural buffer. Down there, packed earth slowed the loss of warmth, the same way a thick blanket slows a heart rate. They lined the pit with stones to keep moisture out laid straw to cradle the food and sealed everything with a wooden lid pressed down by heavy soil, a tight seal, a quiet darkness, a stable world beneath the frost. You can almost picture yourself lifting that lid, your hand brushing cold earth, warm air rising softly from below. In that small underground space, the wind loses all its teeth. It can't freeze. It can't spoil. It can't steal what keeps a family alive. And the payoff was undeniable. Food stayed soft. Food stayed safe. Food stayed alive. A simple pit, but three or four times more effective than leaving supplies above ground. Some say the earth keeps its promises. And for these storage pits, the promise was survival through the longest winters. Today, modern root cellars use the exact same idea. They just gave a new name to what the old world had already perfected. But storing food was only part of the winter battle. How did they stop storms from ripping heat out of their homes? That secret waits just ahead. A warm house meant nothing if the door let the wind in. In winter, a single gust could tear through a room like a knife dropping the temperature in seconds. Every time someone stepped outside, the warmth they had worked so hard to build vanished. It was a thermal shock, small, quick, deadly. So native families learned to fight the cold, not with bigger fires, but with smarter entrances. They created tunnel entry systems, low, narrow, earth-covered passages that forced the body to crouch. That one change mattered. When you lower your body, you move slower. And when you move slower, you don't drag the wind inside. They dug horizontal tunnels into the ground, carved just deep enough for the earth to become a natural insulator, three or four feet of packed soil blocking the cold, stopping convective loss. The way a thick wool coat stops windburn, the ceiling sat low, the door stayed small. And the final seal was nothing more than buffalo hide or thick grass tied tight, simple, silent, effective. You can feel the scene. You crawl forward, shoulders brushing the cool earth, your breath turning to mist. And then, as you enter the main chamber, the air softens. The tunnel holds back the wind. It holds back the cold. It holds the night at the door. And the payoff. Less wind. Less loss. More warmth. Sometimes slowing down, bowing your head saves an entire family. These ancient tunnels worked just like the airlocks used in modern Arctic research stations. Different century, same physics, same wisdom. But wind isn't the only thief of warmth. What about the fire itself? How do you make every spark count inside a buried home? That secret waits in the next fire. In winter, fire was life. But fire was also fragile. 
one gust of wind, one open door, and the flame could sputter into a weak glow. And when the flame weakened, the cold crept in fast through the floor, through the walls, through the breath turning to mist in the dark. The problem was simple a fireplace too high loses heat to the air instead of feeding warmth into the home. So native families learned to bring the fire down low, close to the earth, where heat couldn't escape upward too quickly. They carved a shallow pit in the center of the home, lined it with stone to hold warmth, and kept the flame low and steady. The stones absorbed heat slowly, released it slowly, turning the ground into a gentle thermal bank. Smoke drifted upward through a small vent in the roof while the warmth lingered near the floor exactly where people slept. You can feel it. You kneel by the hearth, your hand hovering over the warm stones. The earth beneath you radiating a soft, steady heat. The fire breathes quietly, low, calm, alive. Then comes the payoff. Warm floor, warm room, warm people. A small flame, but a powerful one. And the principle was ancient and brilliant. The same idea behind the Roman Hippocaust, where heated stones warmed entire floors. Different worlds, same wisdom. Because heat kept near the ground, stays where the body needs it most. But fire and heat were only half the challenge. How did they keep smoke from suffocating a sealed winter shelter? That answer rises next. A semi-underground home could stay warm, but warmth always came with a price air. When the walls were sealed, when the roof was thick, when the fire burned low through the night, smoke gathered slowly, a silent threat rising in the dark. Breath grew heavy, eyes burned, the heart beat faster in the stale air. The problem was clear. A warm home with trapped smoke was a danger in disguise. So native families turned to the ground itself for the answer. They dug subsurface airflow systems, hidden wind channels carved just low enough for the earth to guide the air. A small vent sat near the base of the wall, buried close to the floor. Cold, clean air entered from below, crept across the ground, and fed the fire. Above, a smoke hole in the roof waited for warm air to rise and escape. The temperature difference, cold air entering low warm air lifting high, created a natural draft, a quiet engine of survival that pulled smoke out without letting cold rush in. You can imagine it. You kneel near the vent, feel the faint tug of air brushing past your fingers, hear the soft hum of wind moving through earth and stone. The fire breathes. The room softens, the air becomes safe, and the payoff. No suffocation, no freezing, a full night of steady clean warmth. Because controlling air is controlling life. This ancient ventilation system worked on the exact same principle as modern passive airflow colder air entering low, warmer air, exiting high, no electricity needed. Different ages, same physics, same intelligence. But even with clean air, winners still had one more trick. How did they use the shape of the room itself to trap every last piece of warmth? That answer waits in the final hack. In a half underground home space was small, and every inch mattered. Warmth never spread evenly. One corner glowed soft with fire heat, while another felt like touching stone left out in the wind. That was the problem. Uneven warmth meant uneven chance of surviving the night. But native families watched the earth closely, and they learned something simple, almost sacred. Heat settles in the low, tight places, the places the wind can't reach. So they designed their nights around that truth. Sleeping spots were placed in the deepest pocket of the room, the belly of the earth shelter. Around it, they stacked hides, woven mats, and packed soil walls, all materials that held warmth like memory. Near the top of the chamber, they placed the exit tunnel letting the heavier cold air drift toward the opening before it could sink into the sleeping zone. You can picture it. You crawl to the back of the shelter. Feel the air thicken warmer, calmer. Hear the muted breath of the fire settling into the stone-lined floor. The whole space becomes a natural thermal blanket, a zone shaped by physics and guided by wisdom. And the payoff, warm body, warm breath, warm sleep. Because when a space is understood, it becomes an ally. 
Modern Arctic bunkers use the same idea. Warm zones below cold escape routes above. Different tools, same intelligence. And as the last ember glows under the weight of Earth, one truth rises. Heat is not found. It's managed. In the end, every underground system, every tunnel hearth vent, and sleeping zone carried the same truth warmth was never an accident. It was built, shaped, protected by people who listen to the earth and learn how it breathed. Above ground, the winds still howled across frozen plains, but below, in the quiet dark, families survived because they understood one rule go down to stay alive, and today, even with modern heaters and thick walls, the lesson remains. The earth holds steady warmth. Knowledge turns it into shelter. If you want me to explore each tribal design in its own episode, just leave a single dot and follow if you want to keep walking deeper into the warmth beneath the cold.